comes and goes in seasons around here I thought again There's nothing left around the yield is sorry ignorance If I do echo I hope you never see my mom bought me a guitar when I was young, but I never really played it, you know, it's sort of like one of those, like sitting there and it broke a string and nobody knew how to restring it. And then it just, you know, like I guess what everybody does, it looked cool, you know, and who doesn't want to be in a band, so. I think I was just born with an ability to kind of put my thoughts down to music poetically, I guess, and I have to do it. It's a, like a thing that I'm, I have to get out of me. And I'm not sure why, it's just sort of, I guess, in my DNA. Once I figured out, like, that, you know, this and this, these two fingers here would kind of make, I, like, Song 2 by Blur was the first song that I learned how to play because it was really easy. And then once I found out that once you added the pinky, you could make a power chord, and I was like, oh my god, uh, I can write as many songs as I want now because, you know, I know kind of how to make chords and so I think 13 or 14 I started really writing pretty consistently. I bought a Japanese Telecaster um, when I was 17. My dad actually paid me to stay home for spring break instead of going and like having to like pay for you know a, a house to rent and stuff and so I took that money and bought this used uh, Japanese telly. And then I just kind of fell in love with that and, and have been playing them ever since. For me, I sort of, like this is an interesting guitar because everything's taken out of it except for, you know, the really s small 59 pickup. So, um, and it's like really loud. The sort of traditional Telecasters that, that have really um, kind of tinny sound, I never really loved, loved that. I really was always kind of more towards the Mexican um, tellies that had this kind of a deeper kind of thicker heavy sound so it kind of took me a while to figure out which one I wanted and and you know you kind of learn that the most expensive guitar doesn't necessarily mean it's the best sounding guitar and you know you just kind of have to find out what you like like this here I was always cutting my hands um, with it had this switch here that would switch between this and this and then it had this other little switch down here that I have no idea what it did and I was only using it for one setting, and so we got a guy to, to strip everything out and just hardwire it straight, you know, to, uh, to where you plug it in. And when we did that, it made it about 25% louder. And it was like, oh man, this is, uh, this is it. So, and this guitar has been through a lot. I've broken it several times and thrown it, and, um, but it always kind of bounces back and still sounds great. Initially, when I uh, first got like a, a nice amp, I had like a Blues Junior, but I needed something louder. Um, and so I got a, a DeVille, and then after a while I got um, the Fender Twin, and I broke them all the time. Like I broke like five of them while we were making our second record because they were just so powerful and there was so much volume. Um, and I, I just would overpower them and break them over and over and over again. And then I moved to a Supersonic for a couple of tours, and after all was said and done, I, I went back to the DeVille. It's just sort of the most consistent sound that I've found. I really love it. I do volume at like four and a half. I use a blues driver pedal um, to like amp up the volume, um, and then the volume pedal to kind of like ride that sound. And then I have bass at six, treble at six, mid at zero, and everything else zero. Fender. It's like my favorite guitars to play. We play the amps. It's, it has been our sound um, ever since we've been a band. <laughs>